of Monday Night Raw, Sheamus looks to run a gauntlet, aligned by the WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. Three matches in which Sheamus must win every single one of them, and he will earn another bout against the Visionary for the WWE Championship. We welcome you tonight inside the SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is the season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw. First roll of the fall season, the road to Clash of the Castle set to continue as we have ourselves a four-way elimination battle to determine the number one contender to LA Knight's Intercontinental Championship next month in Principality Stadium, Cardiff, Wales. The following contest is an elimination match. Making his way to the ring from Kyoto, Japan. Weighing in at 220 pounds, Shinsuke Nakamura! WWE Clash at the Castle is coming your way live Sunday night, October the 22nd at 5 p.m. Eastern Time from Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. That's going to kick off what is going to be a couple of international weeks for Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. More info coming on those events in the near future, but Shinsuke Nakamura back tonight for the first time in about six weeks. Took a few weeks away from Monday Night Raw to nurse some nagging injuries, but what better way to come back tonight? Four-way matchup. Last man standing after three have been eliminated will challenge LA Knight for the Intercontinental Gold on October the 22nd. Nakamura's got plenty of history with LA Knight, but can he get through this matchup here tonight in the season premiere of Raw? And here comes the next challenger, a man who has contested for the Intercontinental Championship in the past, obviously not going his way, but tonight could turn all the momentum around for the hungry, intimidating Apollo Crews. And his opponents, first from Benway State, Nigeria, weighing in at 241 pounds, Apollo once again, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for joining us live for this season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw. And of course, the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown coming your way this Friday, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. What a night that is going to be. And still to come in your main event, as you saw at the top of the hour, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus is set for a gauntlet matchup. Three opponents chosen by the WWE Champion Seth Freakin' Rollins. Sheamus must win every single one of those matches to earn the hopes of be challenging Seth Rollins yet again for the WWE title. Big time matchup with stipulations in hand in tonight's main event. But certainly a huge opportunity to kick things off here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And here comes a man who just a few weeks ago took the WWE Champion Seth Rollins to the limit and a man who knows the Intercontinental Championship oh so well. And representing the New Day from Ghana, West Africa, weighing in at 212 pounds, Kofi Kingston. Well, there's been some rumblings in the locker room that the New Day's Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are tired of waiting at the back of the line, whether it's for the tag team titles or tonight a singles opportunity. Kofi and Woods want to get their name back in the limelight here on Monday Night Raw. And of course, the third member of the New Day, Big E, been out with an injury since early April. Can't wait till we see Big E back in action here on Monday Night Raw, but tonight could be a huge opportunity for Kofi Kingston to get the New Day's name on the rise again. If Kofi almost defeated Seth Rollins a few weeks back on Monday Night Raw, it'll certainly be a huge challenge for LA Knight if Kofi challenges for the Intercontinental title next month at Clash at the Castle. One more participant to go, and they call him the big, strong boy. And from Dudley, England, weighing in at 
175 pounds, Tyler Bay. Well, just over 48 hours ago, Tyler Bay unfortunately unsuccessful in his Cruiserweight Classic quarterfinal match against Ricochet. And of course, the CWC continues with the semifinals of that tournament this Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, live from Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York. Unfortunately, Tyler Bate, not a part of those affairs. This coming Saturday, we will see Nathan Frazier taking on Johnny Gargano and Ilya Dragunov battling Ricochet in the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Tyler Bate may not be finding his name in the semifinals of the bracket of the CWC, but tonight a new opportunity arises for the big strong boy. Could Tyler Bate be next in line to challenge for the Intercontinental Championship? That is the question that has a hand Four worthy challengers, and as LA Knight approaches Clash at the Castle next month, who will be standing across the ring from that man inside the sold-out Principality Stadium? We are jam-packed to the rafters here tonight in the SH... Or I should say NHSU Arena. Screw it, Manchester, New Hampshire. We're live Monday Night Raw season premiere. Let's get to the action. Tongue twister of an arena. Well, here we go, Nakamura, Kofi Kingston, Tyler Bate, and Apollo Crews. As we mentioned, four-way elimination matchup. No disqualifications, no countouts. Three men must be pinned or made to submit. Last man standing will face LA Knight for the Intercontinental Championship next month. Kofi Kingston taking down Nakamura in the early going. Gotta wonder if there's any ring rust for Nakamura. Last time we saw him was about two weeks before the SummerSlam event in August. And again, Nakamura taking some time away to rest some naggy injuries, but he's back here tonight with a huge opportunity at stake. And while Kofi Kingston tried to introduce a steel chair there, looking to take fullest advantage of the no disqualification stipulation. Kofi Kingston hungry for opportunity. This is the man who has held the Intercontinental Championship plenty of times throughout his career. And a man who would love to do it again if he can take down LA Knight, a clash at the castle. But first, he's got to get through three other worthy challengers. Oh, man, and Kofi, again, no disqualifications, no countouts in this matchup. And Kofi bring a little bit of an edge to this four-way matchup. What a way to get back in the swing of things for Shinsuke Nakamura here tonight. Apollo Crews in there, maybe the dark horse of this matchup. A few months ago, wait a minute. Looking for the first elimination here. Kofi gets the shoulder up. A few months ago, Apollo Crews challenged Ilya Dragunov during his Intercontinental title reign at Raw Homecoming in Madison Square Garden. Unfortunately, Apollo Crews came up short that night. But now another opportunity arises. Probably the most strongest man in the matchup. Meanwhile, Kofi Kingston swinging that steel chair. Another one he introduced. Now double pinfalls. Nakamura kicks out. Apollo Crews kicks out. It's going to take a little more to see some casualties in this opening matchup. Or LA Knight is backstage here in Manchester, New Hampshire, awaiting who is going to be standing across the square circle from him October the 22nd for the Intercontinental Championship. LA Knight won that gold back in July at Money in the Bank, has retained it over Ilya Dragunov in a rematch over Cedric Alexander, over Sami Zayn. But one of these four men looking to be next on the list. Of course, looking to be the men who defeat LA Knight and take away the gold. Meanwhile, Kofi kicks it with a little SOS to Apollo Crews. And not going for the cover just yet. Realizes that we're still in the early moments of this match. But Kofi Kingston, we talked about the rumblings in the locker room. New Day hungry for opportunity. Tired of waiting at the back of the line. And Kofi taking fullest advantage of the rules tonight. Kofi not usually a man who breaks the rules. But when weapons are almost encouraged in a situation like this, Kofi's got no problem introducing those chairs. But neither does Apollo Crews. Just missed the chair off the delayed vertical. Tyler Bain, Shinsuke Nakamura on the outside of the ring. Those two men, a little bit of history with each other, dating back to the month of May and June. Oh, and Tyler Bain, the big time shooting star press. Meanwhile, Apollo Crews taking Kofi for a ride at those triple Germans. As we were mentioning, Tyler, oh my goodness, he can't even keep up with the action in this matchup. Tyler Bain and Nakamura, one on one match, dating back to the quarterfinals of the King of the Ring tournament earlier this year. Nakamura picked up the win against Tyler Bate on that night. A little bit of history between those two men. And Apollo Crews trying to muscle up Tyler Bate. Oh, wait a minute. That's reversal. Roll up here. Bate looking for the first elimination of this number one contenders match. Not just yet. 
And no matter which way you spin it, LA Knight is going to have his hands full next month in Principality Stadium. What high stakes in the season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw with that big time gauntlet match in your main event. Sheamus looking to earn one more go around with Seth Rollins. Now Apollo Crews on the outside. Tyler Bate with a tope suicida. Things are starting to break down here as Kofi and Nakamura on one side of ringside, Bate and Apollo Crews on the other. All's fair in love and war. And again, pinfall or submission inside the squared circle. The only way we're going to see some eliminations in this contest. So this anarchy right now, completely in the confines of the rules of this match. Oh, and Nakamura sneaking up on Tyler Bate. Nice shot to the rib cage. Kofi continuing to bring in those steel chairs, and Nakamura looking to avoid it. Nakamura's got an arm bar locked in on Kofi Kingston. Going for the submission hold, and Kofi able to roll out of it there. Tyler Bate back inside the squared circle. Him and Apollo Crews are going at it, and Kofi Kingston with a trouble in paradise on Tyler Bate. I don't even know if he was going for Tyler Bate. Looked like he might have been going for Nakamura, and Tyler Bate met the casualty after Nakamura got out of the way. Tyler survived one kick out. He survives a second. And still the matchup rolls on with no eliminations just yet. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this Friday night, we will be live at 5 p.m. Eastern time for the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown. It will feature an open challenge for the United States Championship issued by Cody Rhodes. No disqualifications matchup between Bianca Belair and Shotzi, a sign for SmackDown and so much more this Friday night. All on the road to Clash at the Castle next month, one of our biggest, if not the biggest, international events of all time. More info on that event coming your way later tonight here on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Oh, and Nakamura with that elevated King Shasta to Kingston. And Tyler Bate, double arm powerbomb, he got him. Apollo Crews eliminated by the big strong boy. We are down to three men, and Tyler Bate looking to make it a dose off the eliminations. Not just yet. Nakamura gets the shoulder up, and Kofi Kingston continues to swing the steel. Double arm powerbomb by the big strong boy gives us our first casualty. We know Apollo Crews won't be going to Cardiff, Wales, but which one of these three men will it be? Tyler Bate maybe more motivated than anybody in this matchup. Coming off that loss against Ricochet just 48 hours ago in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Tyler Bate realizing that opportunities don't come around every day. One opportunity may have slipped through his fingers. This past Saturday night in Manhattan, New York, but not looking to see another one. Go by the wayside. SOS to Nakamura. But Shinsuke gets the shoulder up again. The resilience of these men to keep on fighting in your opening matchup. Manchester, New Hampshire, loving the action here in your opening bout on the season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw as Kofi goes for trouble in paradise and nobody home. Nakamura with a stiff kick to the side of the dome of Kofi. Unable to capitalize here is Tyler Bate. You realize on the outside he's just taking his time, maybe the smartest man in the match at the current moment. Kofi and Nakamura trying to destroy, destroy each other, excuse me, and Tyler Bate taking his time. A little rest of recuperation for the big strong boy. As Nakamura kicks out again. Kofi Kingston struggling to earn that elimination over Shinsuke. Kofi Kingston, as you saw and as we already talked about, went one-on-one -on -one with Seth Rollins a few weeks ago here on Monday Night Raw. Absolutely pushed the WWE Champion to his limit and almost had the champion beat on a few occasions. LA Knight may be looking at Kofi Kingston as the most viable threat in this matchup. Or could it be Shinsuke Nakamura, a man who LA Knight has had some battles with throughout this year already? They have split the difference. Have Nakamura and LA Knight in their two previous battles. Nakamura, no elimination just there. Tyler May with a big time exploder on the King of Strong style. Nakamura down, Kofi Kingston days on the outside. Tope suicida by Tyler Bate. Shot like a bullet out of a cannon. Kofi Kingston down on the outside. Tyler Bate looking to take advantage of two downed opponents. Double underhook, power bomb, same maneuver that eliminated Apollo Crews. There you go. Nakamura has been eliminated. Nakamura
Nakamura gone. We are down to two. But wait a minute, Tyler Bate stacking up Kofi Kingston. And back-to-back -back eliminations leads to a clean sweep for the big strong boy. How impressive was Tyler Bate in this matchup? And just in those closing moments, eliminates Nakamura, immediately turns his sight to a dazed Kofi Kingston and capitalizes with the one, two, and three. Here is your winner, Tyler Bates. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up on October the 22nd at Clash at the Castle, the Defiant, L.A. Knight, will put the Intercontinental Championship on the line against the big strong boy, Tyler Bates. After that loss at the Cruiserweight Classic 48 hours ago, what a bounce back victory for Tyler Bate. A clean sweep, defeating Apollo Crews, Kofi Kingston, and Shinsuke Nakamura, and becoming a deserving challenger for the Intercontinental Championship. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. We are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, Sunday night, October the 22nd, we are live from Cardiff, Wales for Clash at the Castle. Intercontinental Championship match signed, but another match signed earlier this afternoon. And my goodness, is it gonna be a monstrous meeting. We will determine a future challenger for the WWE Championship in Cardiff as the almighty Bobby Lashley goes one-on-one -on -one with the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Both these men picking up victories. Just eight nights ago at the Raw exclusive Unforgiven event, now they meet one-on-one -on -one to determine again a future challenger for the WWE title. And speaking of the devil, here comes the almighty. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Colorado Springs, Colorado, weighing in at 273 pounds. The almighty Bobby Lashley. Well, Bobby Lashley has got to be feeling good with that announced matchup for next month in Cardiff. We talked about it back in Unforgiven eight nights ago, but Bobby Lashley losing in his WWE Championship pursuit back at SummerSlam in the Fatal 4-Way matchup. The next time we saw Lashley after that was when Carmelo Hayes knocked off the almighty uh, bite with the feet on the ropes several weeks back here on the red brand. Lashley writing that wrong eight nights ago in Chicago and Unforgiven, defeating Carmelo Hayes in what was a phenomenal matchup, and now turns his sight to Brock Lesnar on October the 22nd. Those issues with Carmelo Hayes and company evidently far from over for the Carmelo Hayes camp, as he has been challenged, that being Bobby Lashley, by Melo's running buddy, Trick Williams, alongside Montel Vontavious Porter for a one-on-one -on -one meeting tonight here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Well, Melo got the victory over Lashley before. Lashley defeated Melo just eight nights ago. Let's see if Trick Williams can bring the momentum back to that Carmelo Hayes camp here on Monday Night Raw. And his opponent, accompanied by MVP from Columbia, South Carolina, weighing in at 205 pounds, Trick Williams. Well, you know, this situation has been oh so interesting because of the X Factor that is Montel Vontavious Porter MVP, a man who used to be alongside Bobby Lashley, dating back to just earlier this year. But Bobby Lashley, of course, again earlier this year, kicking MVP to the side. And then upon moving to Monday Night Raw, so did Montel Vontavious Porter after WrestleMania and got himself some new henchmen in Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes, two of the hottest superstars in NXT at the time. Certainly going to be two future pieces of the Monday Night Raw brand. 
And they got to continue to prove themselves. And that's what Trick Williams is looking to do tonight as he goes one on one with Bobby Lashley. The brains of MVP in the corner. And of course, the motivation of Carmelo Hayes taking that loss at Unforgiven. I'm sure Trick Williams looking to do one good for his camp here tonight. Tons of athleticism in that young man and tons of tools to be a future champion here on Monday Night Raw. But Bobby Lashley laser focused on becoming the number one contender for the WWE Championship. And that high stakes one-on-one -on -one affair with Brock Lesnar signed for Clash of the Castle. You know Lashley's not looking to take a loss tonight. This does not mean Trick Williams isn't going to give it a fight and possibly knock off Bobby Lashley. As Lashley comes off the top, very uncharacteristic. The almighty looking to make some work. Make an example out of Trick Williams here tonight in New Hampshire. Still to come tonight in your main event, the Celtic warrior Sheamus looks to run the gauntlet. Three opponents still yet to be determined, or I should say yet to be announced by Seth Rollins. If Sheamus can survive all three matches, then he will get his wish, which is one more opportunity to get his hands on the visionary for the WWE Championship. High stakes main event. We know Sheamus wants to get his shot at Seth Rollins, and we know that Lashley and Brock Lesnar want to get their opportunities at the WWE Championship. Remains to be seen who is going to walk away holding that number one contendership at Clash of the Castle next month. Lashley just squashing Trick Williams in the corner. Trick showing some signs of life in this matchup. Wait a minute, Lashley going for the kill. Hurt lock locked in. Ragdoll and Trick Williams right now. And there's the tap out. And a loud message sent to the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar ahead of October 22nd. Well, the Almighty is back to business here on Monday Night Raw. And Lashley's eyeing up an opportunity for the WWE title. Here is your winner, the Almighty Bobby Lashley. Back to back wins for Bobby Lashley, impressive as ever. But will the Almighty be able to topple the Beast Incarnate when they meet one on one October the 22nd at Clash at the Castle to determine a future challenger for the oh so prestigious WWE Championship? Well, over the last six weeks, we have seen the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament play out before our very eyes, but 16 men have become four, and this Saturday afternoon, we kick off the semifinals. And you can expect to see all sorts of high-flying and exhilarating action as Nathan Frazier, former NXT Heritage Cup winner, goes one-on-one -on -one with the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano. And also coming up in the semifinals, the one and only Ricochet meets the invincible Ilya Dragunov. Two semifinal matches. The winners are going straight to the finale next week of the Cruiserweight Classic. We are live this Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time from Hammerstein Ballroom in Manhattan, New York. We are back inside Manchester, New Hampshire for the season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw. Sonya Deville set for some women's division action. And she's gonna have her hands full tonight with a motivated man, Becky Lynch. Hot off the heels with her victory against Asuka at Unforgiven, looking to keep the momentum strong. And from Dublin, Ireland, Becky Lynch. Well, Lynch took to Twitter, or I should say X, earlier today and had this to say. Defeating Asuka was just part one. Now, I want the WWE Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley, the last time we fought, I won. Next time around, I will win again and take your title. Becky Lynch throwing down the challenge and stating nothing but facts, defeating Asuka eight nights ago in Chicago. And the last time Becky met Rhea Ripley one-on-one, -on -one, this is dating back to the month of August, Becky did defeat Rhea Ripley right here on Monday Night Raw. The man Becky Lynch wants her opportunity at the WWE Women's Championship, something she's been chasing all year long, and unfortunately the title has slipped through her fingers on just a few occasions. But now Becky Lynch laser focused all over again, getting through that burden that was Asuka at Unforgiven, and now looks to turn her focus against Rhea Ripley in the WWE Women's Championship. 
But here we go, the season premiere edition of Monday Night Raw continues as Becky Lynch has got her hands full with a tough Sonya Deville inside of the squared circle. And Deville is somebody who we've only seen so much of in recent months here on Monday Night Raw, but I'm sure Sonya would love to pick up a victory. And it's one of the hottest women in the division right now, that being Becky Lynch, and possibly built some momentum for herself and possibly aligning herself to become the number one contender for Rhea Ripley. Of course, Ripley successfully cashing in her money in the bank at the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event, that being No Mercy nine nights ago in Baltimore against Shayna Baszler to become the WWE Women's Champion. Women's Division really heating up here on Monday Night Raw. My goodness. A knee right to the jaw at any given week. That would have been a victory for Sonya Deville, but not tonight against the man Becky Lynch. Going to take a little more, but that was a tough strike. and certainly shows some resilience in Becky Lynch to be able to keep on fighting after that. A big time exploder in time inside the squared circle. Becky Lynch looking to keep her momentum going. Sonya Deville looking to throw off Lynch off the rails tonight. And put her name back in the spotlight here on the red brand. Sonya going back to the well with what works. Another knee right to the man. And Becky Lynch has got to be hurting right now. Sonya Deville came in with a game plan, looking to execute it to perfection and take Becky Lynch out of the equation. Becky just trying to create some distance between herself and Sonya Deville, who is all over the man right now. Oh, wait. Reversal. Shoulder block to the gut. Becky Lynch better take advantage of that timely... Misstep by Sonya Deville. And now up against the ropes, Becky Lynch. Looking to get back into this contest. Whipping Sonya off. Collar and elbow here, and Sonya Deville not allowing Becky Lynch to take back the momentum of this contest here tonight. And now look at this. Sonya Deville with that MMA background, with the kicks, with the strikes, taking Becky off her feet. Sonya Deville very well may be one of the most underrated women in the division, looking to prove why here tonight. Getting whipped off into the ropes, Becky dropped down, and a nice kick by the man, who's coming off a very physical and exhilarating matchup against Asuka eight nights ago in Unforgiven. But Becky now trying to get back into this matchup. Great strength shown by the man right there. And just like that, that is how quick Becky Lynch can change the tides of this matchup. And with her calling out Rhea Ripley on X, clearly looking to make a statement tonight. And she's got the disarmor locked in on Sonya Deville. And you see the positioning. Sonya not facing the ropes. Can't reach out to make the break. Sonya's got to fight or she's got to tap and she elects to tap out. And that's going to be a win. Or I should say, yet another win for the man Becky Lynch as her road to number one contendership against the Nightmare, the eradicator of the Judgment Day, Rhea Ripley, continues. Big time win for big time Bex here tonight, but has she done enough to put herself in line to determine her the number one contender for Rhea Ripley's Women's Championship? Here is your winner, Becky well, I'm sure Rhea Ripley has got her eyes on Becky Lynch because the man may, at the, may be at the front of the line to challenge the Nightmare for the WWE Women's title. Statement made by Becky. First Asuka eight nights ago, Sonya Deville tonight. What is going to be next in the man's road to becoming the number one contender for Rhea Ripley? Well, it's been a great night of action here at the season premiere of Raw, but the action continues this Friday night on SmackDown as we are live at 5 p.m. Eastern time for the season premiere of the Blue Brand. And coming your way Friday night, we will determine the number one contenders for the Brawling Brutes World Tag Team title as Legato Del Fantasma's Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde take on Kaiser and Vinci of Imperium. It is a no disqualifications Brutal affair, a sign for the EST. Bianca Belair and the ballsy man as Shotzi. Shotzi picked up the win at no mercy. Can she go two for two against Bianca Belair this Friday? And who is gonna accept the open challenge issued by the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes for the United States Championship? The main event of SmackDown Gold will be on the line, but who will contest Cody Rhodes for the red, white, blue, and gold? 
And coming your way next Monday night on Raw, the Intercontinental Champion, LA Knight, is back to action in a non-title affair against a man who has been on his tail for months, Cedric Alexander. This could be Alexander's last chance to get an opportunity at the Intercontinental title. And the WWE Champion Seth Rollins returns to action next Monday night as he goes one-on-one -on -one with the new number one contender for the Intercontinental title, that being the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate, Seth Rollins, one-on-one, -on -one, live next Monday night on Raw. But as for the season premiere, it is main event time here in Manchester, New Hampshire. It's time to run the gauntlet. But if any man can do it, it's gonna be the Celtic Warrior on tonight of all nights, as it is fight night here on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring, representing the Brawling Brutes from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds, the Celtic Warrior, Shane. Sheamus went to war with Seth Rollins eight nights ago at Unforgiven. Unfortunately, unsuccessful in his pursuit of not only the WWE Championship, but of retribution against Seth Rollins for putting him on the shelf all those months ago. Sheamus threw down the challenge. Rollins said, run the gauntlet and I'll give you your wish. One more chance at my WWE title and one more chance at your so-called payback you have against me. But here we go. Sheamus' first opponent in this gauntlet matchup representing the Judgment Day gonna be the Prince, Finn Balor. And his opponent representing the Judgment Day from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland weighing in at 190 pounds, Finn. Well, this really comes as no surprise as there has been loose connections between the Judgment Day and Seth Rollins for months, especially because of the common enemy in the Brawling Brutes. And Finn Balor coming out with just a little less hardware tonight as eight nights ago, himself and Damian Priest losing the World Tag Team titles to Butch and Ridge Holland of the Brawling Brutes. So I'm sure Finn Balor looks at this matchup tonight as not only an opportunity to get back in the win column for the Judgment Day, possibly start to earn themselves another round at the Brawling Brutes for the World Tag Team titles, but also looking for a little bit of retribution of his own against the head honcho of the Brutes, that being the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. Balor's only the first opponent. Sheamus must survive not one, not two, not three, or I should say three matches in total. He's got to win them all, and then he will earn the matchup against Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship. Only if he can win back to back to back. And you remember Seth Rollins stating that this might be Sheamus' last chance. He wants the retribution. He wants the WWE title. Well, you better prove it. And tonight's the night to do it. We thank you for joining us all night long as what has been an awesome edition of the season premiere of Monday Night Raw, kicking off the fall season here on the red brand. The road to Clash at the Castle continuing. Great night of action thus far, but it's set to continue in this high stakes, high reward, loaded pressure main event. The Celtic Warrior, raring to go. And is he coming into this match 100% after the war with Rollins eight nights ago? Remains to be seen, but whether he is or not, we know Sheamus is gonna keep on swinging until he hears a final bell. But Finn Balor with that drop kick, maybe looking to reopen up the wound that caused Sheamus some extra fatigue in that match against Rollins at Unforgiven. The cut above the eye of the Celtic Warrior did not do him any favors in his pursuit of the WWE Championship against Rollins eight nights ago. Sheamus gonna do the best he can to survive this matchup. Obviously wasn't gonna turn down the offer from Seth Rollins as much as Sheamus wants to get back at the Visionary. Remember it all started several months ago. Rollins and Sheamus issues boiled over and Seth Rollins curb stomped Sheamus on the outside of the ring after an already exhausting match causing Sheamus to lose two months of his career due to injury. Sheamus has been itching for payback ever since his return. And now that Rollins is the WWE Champion, he wants to take that gold away from the Visionary. 
A whole lot of bad blood between Sheamus and Rollins, but if we're gonna see it one more time, if Sheamus is gonna have another crack, he's gotta get through Balor and two more opponents. Finn Balor so far in control of this first matchup of the gauntlet. And wait a minute, Sheamus with a big time neck breaker over the Prince. Sheamus has gotta get back into this matchup here. Big time backbreaker on Balor. It's not gonna be an easy task for Sheamus here tonight, especially when you're in there with a former world champion, Finn Balor, who is gonna be motivated to try to take out the head honcho of the Brawling Brutes. Meanwhile, Sheamus with this big time backbreaker submission hold, and Balor looking to break the grip of the Celtic Warrior. Wait a minute. Roll up there, the rope break saves Sheamus. There's gonna be a lot of action to keep up with in this matchup as we witness Sheamus's pursuit of becoming the number one contender all over again. Sheamus on the outside, a little bit dazed as you see, and Finn Balor's wheels may be spinning. And now Finn, charge it up, going over the top rope with the Topekid Hero. Sheamus down on the outside by way of the Prince Finn Balor. Now Sheamus sitting in the barricade. Balor looking to do some big time damage. Remember, Sheamus loses one of these matchups. That's it. He doesn't keep on fighting. Balor defeats Sheamus. There won't be a second or third matchup in this gauntlet match. Back inside the ring we go. Wait a minute. Ball game. Sheamus with the bro kick out of nowhere. And that's a victory. Sheamus going one for three in this matchup so far. And that's an early win as well. Sheamus caught Balor with the bro kick. Survives the first bout early on. And now moves forward to his second affair with not too much added fatigue. Oh man, big time win for Sheamus. And well, here you go. Finn Balor down. And the other half of the Judgment Day gonna make their way down the aisle. To no surprise, Seth Rollins lining up the men in the black and the purple as the Archer of Infamy makes his way to the ring. And his opponent, representing the Judgment Day from New York, New York, weighing in at 249 pounds, Damian Priest. Damian Priest, I'm sure, was waiting behind the curtain and just witnessed Finn Balor get knocked off with that bro kick out of nowhere. But now Damian Priest looks to pick up where Balor left off. And man, Sheamus has gotta be sweating. He's gotta be already feeling the fatigue. A short but obviously physical matchup with Balor moments ago. Now he goes one-on-one -on -one with the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest. And the even more interesting situation here is just two weeks ago on Raw, Priest went one-on-one -on -one with Sheamus in an absolutely hard-fought matchup. Sheamus picked up the win in the end, but it did not come without some definite challenge from the Archer of Infamy. Damian Priest was a tough opponent then, and now with Sheamus coming in to this second match in the gauntlet, obviously not 100%, the challenge is only going to be raised. The bar is only going to be higher for Sheamus to climb. And here we go. The bell has sounded Priest and Sheamus now in the second match in this gauntlet. Sheamus trying to come out swinging at Damian Priest having none of it. Sheamus may be looking for the same strategy of what we just saw moments ago. Hitting that bro kick out of nowhere on Finn Balor and allowed him to get the three count. Damian Priest knowing that Sheamus may be going for the kill early is going to have to stay wary of it. Sheamus can't bring the same game plan to each and every one of these matchups as Damian Priest looking to eliminate Sheamus from his number one contendership aspirations. Sheamus got to get back into this and as we mentioned he better start swinging early because Damian Priest looking to spoil the Celtic Warriors evening before Sheamus can even have the chance to think about a third matchup in this gauntlet. And I'm sure Seth Rollins may be feeling a little itchy after Finn Balor just got knocked off, but relaying his confidence in Damian Priest right now. On the outside of the ring, Damian Priest brings Sheamus to the floor. Priest looking to inflict some punishment on the Celtic Warrior in the midst of this gauntlet matchup here tonight on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Sheamus can easily be counted out here and easily lose this matchup. 
Normal rules apply in this gauntlet as they do in any other normal wrestling matchup. Sheamus has got to get the job done. Damian Priest looking to inflict so much punishment on Sheamus that he's not going to be able to survive. Forget a three count, possibly not even make his way back inside the squared circle. And now what? Damian Priest, Sheamus on the shoulders. Oh, man. Big time Samoan drop at ringside by the Archer of Infamy. Sheamus is dazed. Sheamus on spaghetti legs. He better hustle back in the ring, and he does. Sheamus close call there, but just because he survived the count out doesn't mean he was gonna thrive as Damian Priest catches him with a lariat. Fatigue is gonna play a factor into this matchup. And as we already speculated on, Sheamus most likely not coming into this bout tonight at 100% after the war he sustained with Seth Rollins eight nights ago in Chicago. Sheamus able to get the shoulder up right there. And you see the frustration starting to creep in for Damian Priest. But Sheamus looking to keep that frustration going. He's got Damian Priest on the shoulders. A little light noise here on the season premiere. A cover by Sheamus. Looking to move on. Not just yet as Damian Priest gets the shoulder up. That's got to be a gut punch for Sheamus. Hoping he was going to get the three count there and move on to the third and final match in the gauntlet. No three count, but Sheamus going to elect to keep the foot on the gas pedal, as he must do. You know, there's a reason Seth Rollins gave Sheamus such a, a challenge here tonight to earn himself another matchup. He doesn't want to fight Sheamus again, I truly believe. It's for reasons like this as the Celtic Warrior with a victory roll off the middle buckle. Going for the cover. Will that be it? No. Damian Priest survives again. Seth Rollins knows how much of a hard-fought battle it was against Sheamus eight nights ago in Unforgiven. Sheamus almost winning the WWE Championship on a few occasions in that match. Rollins does not want to find himself back in that same position. But on the same accord, realizes Sheamus is going to continue to be on his tail until Rollins puts the final nail in the coffin. And that is why we have this gauntlet here tonight. And Sheamus misses off the knee. Damian Priest lucky to survive right there. Pulls him in and now looking to take the momentum back. And Sheamus rolling to the outside trying to create some distance between himself and the punishment of the Judgment Day. Sheamus might have survived Finn Balor with that quick bro kick and cover, but not having the same luck against Damian Priest right now. Back inside the ring. I should say a ring sign. Sheamus is eating the hardest part of the ring in that apron. The fight continues in the ring skirts here in New Hampshire, and a big time counter by the Celtic Warrior. Now Sheamus off the apron with the knee. And now on the outside of the ring, Sheamus begins to rally. We're going to turn the tides of momentum in this gauntlet match as he sends Damian Priest into the steel steps. And the Celtic Warrior may be looking for a countout victory here. Any means necessary to survive in this contest and move on to the third and final match of this gauntlet. Damian Priest back inside the ring. Sheamus awaiting the opponent, sending Priest right out to the outside again. Sheamus just trying to find any window of opportunity to secure victory. As Priest back inside the ring, Sheamus gonna start the bar room fight. Throwing left, throwing right, and a bicycle knee takes the Archer of Infamy off his feet and into the cover he finds himself. There's the one and only a one count. Sheamus has gotta go for the kill. He was able to hit that bro kick and defeat Finn Balor. Maybe he's gotta wind up the kick. And deliver the boot right to the jaw of Damian Priest. Elects for the power bomb, the cover. And he got the two that time, but still, the punishment of the Judgment Day is still in this gauntlet match. Gotta wonder how Seth Rollins is feeling right now watching this as Sheamus has already survived one contest. Not able to put Damian Priest away thus far, but same can be said on the opposite side as Priest delivers Sheamus Face first to the canvas. And that may do it there, not just yet. Sheamus survives, but for how much longer? Priest thought he had it. Now sending Sheamus into the ropes and pulls him back with the elbow. A stiff one at that. 
Very high pressure situation surrounding the WWE Championship right now with Sheamus on the tail of the champion Seth Rollins. Of course, the number one contenders matchup that we found out earlier tonight will take place on October the 22nd in Cardiff, Wales. Bro kick by Sheamus. Will that do it? No, Damian Priest kicks out and Sheamus' brain has got to be racking right now. Thought he had the Archer of Infamy to no avail. It's the same situation Sheamus found himself in two weeks ago in a hard-fought battle with Damian Priest. And then may leave Damian Priest with a little extra motivation tonight to not only defeat Sheamus in this gauntlet match, not only get some momentum for the Judgment Day, but also take back that victory from two weeks ago. Damian Priest surviving Sheamus' best shot. And if Sheamus couldn't put Priest away with the bro kick, then what is it going to take? Maybe a schoolboy. Will he steal the victory here? Oh, and he almost had him. A Priest pops his shoulder off the canvas. And the Archer of Infamy could be looking for Razor's Edge. Hoisting Sheamus in the air. I do not like this. Oh, wait a minute. Counter by the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus doing anything he can to survive right now. Backbreaker. A sense of urgency out of Sheamus. Oh, wait a minute. Could be looking for a second. White noise on the Arch of Infamy. Into the cover. Will that do it? Sheamus is moving on to the third and final match in the gauntlet. The Judgment Day demise continues. Finn Balor off the list. Damian Priest, there's another check mark. But now Sheamus. After all those physical battles with Priest and Balor, now most focused on a third meeting. One more match, and Sheamus gets his hands on the Visionary. Who is it going to be standing across the ring from the Celtic Warrior? Oh, man. Well, the WWE Champion Seth freaking Rollins pulling out an ace in the hole. The Harbinger of Doom. Carrion Cross. And Cross has got to be coming into this, to this matchup tonight. Fired up, focused, and absolutely pissed off at what happened seven nights ago here on Raw when he was upset by the Blackheart Tommaso Ciampa. Seth Rollins looking to take advantage of Carrion Cross's anger and focus it in on the Celtic Warrior and looks to bring Doomsday to Sheamus' hopes of becoming the number one contender all over again. Well, things just go from bad to worse for the Celtic Warrior, but he survived Finn Balor. He survived Damian Priest. If he can get through Karrion Cross, Sheamus has got his wish. But a fatigued Warrior is just not going to be on the same level as a fresh Harbinger of Doom. Certainly the feel becoming a big fight one here in Manchester, New Hampshire. The ante has been up and the mood just changed. And you remember what happened after Tommaso Ciampa defeated Cross last week? Cross not sitting with that loss, ambushing Ciampa at ringside, excuse me, sending him into the steel steps just for the added bonus. And now the Harbinger of Doom back in action here tonight. And as we mentioned, looking to focus that rage on the Celtic Warrior. And you know, I'd be willing to bet that Karrion Cross took this matchup on behalf of Seth Rollins, thinking that if he can defeat the Celtic Warrior, that may get Cross back in line for a future WWE Championship match. Cross was chasing that title throughout the summer, slipped through his fingers on a few occasions. But maybe this is going to be what gets Karrion Cross the number one contendership that he so desires. Well, here we go. Karrion Cross is here. Sheamus had about a minute or so to rest up, but that ain't gonna be enough when Karrion Cross is coming out swinging. Third and final match in the gauntlet, and it may not last too long. Sheamus is hurt, and Karrion Cross is looking to prey on this weakened animal. Sheamus is down and carrying Cross. Look at this. Just inflicting a beatdown on the Celtic Warrior. I do not like Sheamus' chances right now. 
Balor's one thing, Priest is another. Sheamus was able to survive both of them, but now Karrion Cross looking to spoil the hopes and dreams of the Celtic Warrior. At least not yet. Sheamus gonna keep fighting until he hears a bell. Wait a minute. Might have reversed that lariat, but if I'm not mistaken, I believe the wound of Sheamus from Unforgiven eight nights ago has been reopened by hands of Karrion Cross. And with blood trickling from the head of the Celtic Warrior, that is not gonna pay him dividends just as it did not against Rollins and Unforgiven. And a boot scrape in the corner, and the Celtic Warrior is absolutely becoming a casualty of war before our very eyes here in Manchester, New Hampshire tonight. Carrying Cross is just not stopping this assault. He is gonna beat and pummel Sheamus. A man he's got history with. Carrying Cross has defeated Sheamus here on the Red Brain before. It's gotta be in the back of the mind of the Celtic Warriors. He hopes to get back into this matchup, but at what cost? Oh man, another shot. Those forearms are just going to start to add up. Sheamus is going to be even more dazed, even more confused, possibly risking concussion in this matchup, but still going to keep fighting. There's a reversal there. Oh, and Karrion Cross is not even allowing Sheamus to close the gap. Things may start getting uncomfortable in the midst of this gauntlet matchup. Sheamus is hurt. And Karrion Cross looking to take fullest advantage. Off the suplex. And you notice Cross yet to go for a cover. Just inflicting some damage on Sheamus. Realizing he's going to keep swinging until this matchup is done and over with. Look at that. Sheamus not even able to stand on his own two feet. Hitting the turnbuckles with such power. Oh, but there's a nice reversal by Sheamus there. Taking out the leg of Cross. Just because he's hurt doesn't mean he's defeated. Fireman's carry position by the Celtic Warrior. Into a powerbomb position. Wait a minute! Sending Cross to the outside with a power bomb over the top rope. Carrying Cross taking a fall. Getting to his feet off pure adrenaline here. Sheamus has got to take advantage of what is going to be a damaged Harbinger of Doom. Well, that is one way to get back into this matchup. Things might have gone. Real bad for Karrion Cross right there. But trying to get back into this match as he's on Sheamus' tail. And a Sheamus ragdoll and Cross. Meanwhile, Scarlet just trying to take Sheamus' eye off the ball. To no avail, and it's only a one count by the Celtic Warrior. Sheamus just trying to do all he can, but there's a reversal there by Cross. Doomsday Saino! And that may do it. Into the cover. And Sheamus survives. Sheamus lives on one moment longer. The will, the heart, the resilience of Sheamus. He wants this matchup with Seth Rollins more than anything. He wants his retribution. He wants the WWE title. But can he survive carrying Cross just long enough and get the three count? The Doomsday Saido might not have did it, but that doesn't mean Sheamus has got enough left in the tank to keep on fighting. Just getting sent to the outside there, carrying Cross on the Warrior's tail. And another Lariat! Delivered with such emphatic force at ringside. Ascending Sheamus just ragdolling him at ringside right now. This is not going to go well for... The Celtic Warrior, who already came into this matchup, obviously not 100%. What is going to be the condition of Sheamus coming out of this match? It's one thing to get past Finn Balor. Sheamus was able to survive that fairly quickly thanks to the quick bro kick that took the Prince off his game. And then a physical battle with Damian Priest. And now it's just getting... Short story, just a whooping by carrying across to say the least. Ragdolled inside the squared circle right now. Karrion Cross again. The beatdown just commences as Karrion Cross has got the full mount on Sheamus and just throwing those closed fist and forearms. Manchester, New Hampshire. Things have got to be a little uncomfortable for this audience watching this beatdown right now as Karrion Cross is ragdolling Sheamus, which is not something you see every day. 
And that may do it as Cross goes to the cover. There's the two, but Sheamus again gets the shoulder up. A little less enthusiastic off the kick out that time. But Sheamus just trying to do all he can to survive. Back inside the ring as Cross is throwing the open palms to the chest of Sheamus and delivers a big boot to the open wound. Sheamus kicked out, but he's running off adrenaline right now. At some point, that tank is going to run out of fuel. As he's hoisted on the top rope by Cross, carrying Cross, looking to deliver a superplex from the heavens. Look at the muscle by carrying Cross. Oh, wait. Counter by Sheamus. Karrion Cross knocked on the turnbuckle. And that may be what turns this bout around for Sheamus. Oh, wait a minute. Small package by Cross. Cross going to steal it. Not this way. No, Sheamus kicks out. What a matchup. What a performance by Sheamus here on the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Karrion Cross trying to get back into the fight. Sheamus, however, backbreaker. Any means necessary to get the victory and fight Seth Rollins one more time. Oh man. With Cross hoisted up for a Celtic Cross. Sheamus is going to do it into the pitfall. No, Karrion Cross gets the shoulder up as Sheamus was half a second away to becoming the number one contender all over again. Going for the broke kick, but nobody home. And Karrion Cross, just like that, in a snap of the fingers, is back in control. And was that the last ditch effort by Sheamus to win this gauntlet match and fight Seth Rollins for the WWE title one more time? Karrion Cross off the sidestep. And now, a second Doomsday Saito. And the weakened warrior, maybe about to fall to his prey as Karrion Cross from behind with the straight jacket submission hold. Very few men have escaped this hold in the past. And a bloody weakened warrior. I don't like Sheamus' chances right now. Sheamus too far from the ropes. Does he have enough to break the hold? Or is he going to pass out and leave his WWE Championship aspirations fading to black? Man, Cross has got that choke hold in. So tight on the Warrior. Oh, but Sheamus able to sneak out at an elbow. I can't believe Sheamus is able to get out of the submission hold. Sending Cross into the ropes and a knee right to the rib cage. Dropping the leg for good measures. Business is picking up in this main event as Sheamus continues to persevere, continues to survive. And if the Doomsday Saidos on not one but two occasions, plus the stray jacket submission hold, didn't push Sheamus away, Karrion Cross may be the one questioning whether he has what it takes to defeat this motivated as all hell warrior. The fight getting taken to the outside, and Sheamus is in control. At least for the moment. As he sends Cross back inside of the ring. Is the adrenaline going to hold up? Or is Sheamus' minutes numbered in this match? Big time backdrop by the Celtic Warrior. And this big great white looking to use whatever power he's got left to try to take down the Harbinger of Doom and there's a running power slam. Oh, wait a minute. Well, not that wicked witch, Scarlet at ringside, trying to take the eye off the ball of Sheamus as Karrion Cross comes from behind. That son of a bitch might have just costed Sheamus his number one contender's aspirations. Now Karrion Cross just wiping the face, the broken face, I should say, of Sheamus right now. Bringing this weakened warrior to his feet. And Karrion Cross, wait a minute, gets caught with the backbreaker, Sheamus! Bro kick! Sheamus with the bro kick! Does he have him here? Sheamus survives! Sheamus goes three for three in the gauntlet match! And he earns himself one more opportunity against the visionary Seth freaking Rollins for the WWE Championship! What a match! What a performance! Sheamus lives on! And Seth Rollins will see one more meeting with this oh-so-motivated warrior for the WWE title.
What a win by Sheamus tonight on Raw. Here is your winner, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus. The Celtic Warrior, Sheamus, eight nights ago, fell to the visionary at Unforgiven. Eight nights later, finds himself. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Seth Rollins is in the ring, the WWE Champion. Attacking Sheamus from behind. Sheamus who just outlasted every challenge Seth Rollins put in front of him. And now the visionary is looking to take out Sheamus himself. Oh, come on now, come on now. A curb stop by Rollins. After not one, not two, but three physical altercations, Sheamus barely survives, earns himself another opportunity at Seth Rollins, and this is how Seth Rollins repays the Celtic Warrior. Well, Rollins, I'm sure is in disbelief, did not think that Sheamus was gonna be able to survive tonight. And this weakened Celtic Warrior just met the cold hard steel chair. We need some help out here right now. The match is over, but the WWE Champion Seth Rollins is pissed off and fired up that he has now got to live to fight Sheamus one more time. As the assault continues here in the middle of the ring. Rollins knows the war that Sheamus gave him eight nights ago. His WWE Championship was in jeopardy. Rollins could not have been thinking that Sheamus was going to survive here again tonight. Well, Rollins' word is going to have to be kept. It was signed on the dotted line. Sheamus will get another WWE Championship match against Seth Rollins, but that's if he can even survive this beatdown by Rollins right now. This is absolutely ridiculous. Just a heinous assault by the WWE Champion, who may be looking to put Sheamus back on the shelf before Sheamus even gets to take advantage of the number one contendership that he just earned. Rollins is ragdolling a weakened warrior right now. Now he's got those steel steps as if they're really necessary. Why is this beatdown continuing to commence and nobody's doing a damn thing about it? And the steel steps right to Sheamus. This is absolutely a show of character by Seth Rollins. Doesn't give a damn about anybody's well-being but himself. And only cares about the gold that is wrapped around his waist. The WWE title. The referee is helpless to stop it. There's a locker room full of people, and nobody's coming out here to help Sheamus. And it's worth noting that the Brawling Brutes not in the building tonight per stipulation by Seth Rollins. This fight gets taken to the top of the entrance ramp, and Seth Rollins continues the assault. There's absolutely nothing left in the tank of Sheamus. It's a lifeless body, and the WWE Champion is just inflicting punishment on it. This is what Sheamus gets as a reward. Rollins said, you want another WWE title match? Fine, if you can make it there. These guys are dangerously close at all, but come on now! Sheamus getting thrown off the stage. And listen, I understand it's not like a 30-foot you know, fall or anything like that, but it's still a fall, and Sheamus just going crashing and burning on the floor here in Manchester, New Hampshire. Oh, come on now. Come on, a curb stop by Seth Rollins. Absolutely ridiculous and heinous assault by the WWE Champion. Sheamus outlasts the gauntlet. He will challenge Rollins for the title once more, but Seth Rollins looking to make sure Sheamus doesn't make it to another meeting against the Visionary. Thank you for joining us for the season premiere of Raw. Good night, everybody. Face on when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back, I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat, gonna see me rise, you can hate on that, I don't play both sides, doing me no cap, I'm a rock.